When one rides a roller coaster at the local amusement park, he or she is given a rambunctious wild ride like none other. The turns, loops, drops, and hills, untamed speed. But what is creating this awe-inspiring experience? That's our job. To delve you into the physics of those roller coasters, the physics behind the fun. The basis of all roller coasters is a force called gravity. Gravity is what creates the speed at the bottom of a drop, what decreases the speed at the top of a hill, and keeps the train moving. How do coasters get the momentum to travel monstrous hills at great speeds? Well, there are two main methods. One is the classic chain lift. This is a steady incline of track with a chain similar to a bicycle chain to which the trains attach. At the top, the train disengages from the chain, heading down the hill with much speed thanks to gravity. The other method is a launch. Launches can result from energized magnets, the moving of hydraulic fluid, or the escaping of compressed air. Launches can propel trains in a short distance as opposed to the cumbersome lift hill. While riding, one can both feel and experience forces acting upon them. The first is called positive gravitational forces. Positive G's, as they are more commonly called, push riders towards their seats at the bottom of the drops. Negative G's propel riders from their seats at the top of hills. Dubbed airtime, this can be restricted by the use of harnesses and seat belts. Lateral G's force riders to the side of the car during turns. These are also popular on flat rides. Seen here, the cars get more and more angled as the speed increases because of lateral G's. The last force is centrifugal force. This is how riders stay in their seats during the loop even without the use of safety harnesses. However, safety harnesses are required and recommended by federal and state law. Together, all of these forces create an amazing ride beyond one's imagination. These are roller coasters.